guys, we're here at Revenge of Comics for the launch of Hollow. We're super excited. This is a really fun, cozy, queer, spooky story. If you're familiar with Lumberjanes, you'll know who Shannon Waters is, so you're not going to want to miss this. Oh my gosh, let's go meet the creators. We're going to do that right now. All right. Hey, guys. So we are so excited to be here today. Uh, would you guys like to introduce yourselves for our lovely audience? Sure, sure, yeah. So you know, uh, I'm Shannon Waters. Uh, I'm one of the co-writers of this new book, Hollow. And I'm Brandon Boyer White. I'm the other co-writer. We are like really excited about. We we got a sneak preview of your guys' new graphic novel. Yeah. It is so amazing. So much fun. Our first question: Why did you guys decide to adapt Sleepy Hollow? It's such an interesting story. We haven't seen recent adaptations of it, so it's a really cool choice. Thank you very much. Uh, we <laughs> decided to do it. Uh, I've. Uh, I mean, we both love Halloween, but I especially am a huge Halloween She's a freak. Sweet girl. Yeah, uh, have been for a long time. And um, The Headless Horseman is one of my favorite ghosts. Sleepy Hollow is one of my favorite stories, like whatever adaptation that is. Um, so there's been so many good ones uh, over the centuries. And um, we took a trip to the town of Sleepy Hollow. It's an actual town yeah. in, yeah, in upstate New York really yeah, that you can totally and go visit. Very much. <laughs> like it is in the graphic novel like You're everyone kidding. is obsessed with the headless horseman oh, everyone is obsessed wow. with halloween and we went uh, we went 2019 and uh by the end of the trip we were kind of crazy about this place and we were like god we basically said what you just said like it hasn't been an adaptation where it's been like yeah. you know yeah teenagers interacting with the headless horseman yeah. and by the end of our dinner our last night we kind of had the idea of what would become hollow yeah yeah that's, yeah that's so awesome they actually had a really interesting question um about your your guys's um decision oh for, yeah for yeah. the horsemen we were wondering why you decided to make them like separate entities like you know gordo is like oh, yeah. his own special guy the horse as well <laughs> Like, it, it just is funny. Like, yeah. I, I really like the idea of the horseman kind of being a silent character that uh, spoke with his body language. Yeah. And, um, I enjoy a trio. I really liked, I, I liked the idea, not to spoil too much, but I like the idea of the horseman and the pumpkin, who you will meet, uh, and uh, the horse to be a, a team yeah. instead yeah. of just one entity. Is yeah. it too spoilery of a question if I ask in a, in the next installment, uh -huh. which we're already excited for, <laughs> will we get more of how they became a trio? Like, how those relationships developed over time? Ooh, so, some idea. character backstory. Uh, you know, um, we are definitely already like dreaming up what we would want in an next installment yeah, yeah. like we're can't, can't turn of. that off uh yeah so so we're definitely uh in sort of the the planning plotting stages of it um that's actually a really interesting idea and if it happens you know where it came <laughs> from um yeah i mean we're still kicking story ideas around so that could be I the case it's a great one. Yeah. i mean if it's in there you're compelled <laughs> <laughs> to know this I feel like we should deliver. If it's in there, you guys, you're welcome. <laughs> you're welcome. Side <laughs> <laughs> as a co-writer. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I guess to kind of jump on that as well, yeah. we'll sort of like continue the tradition of like, you know, I was a big fan of Lumber Games, uh -huh. like, growing, so I just have to kind of throw it in there. And I was one of the first like Western publications of like LGBT plus like media, you know, I saw it. That really meant a lot I to love me. That. Oh, so do you think like there will be like more like people you're bringing into the team to kind of like uh, spread like the different stories like because you know you have different writers too for Lumber Games. Well, I think that's so them. that's such a cool idea. Probably because it's OGNs, we you know we won't necessarily with the next volume, but who knows? You know, you never know. Uh, Lumber Games yeah. was supposed to, supposed to be eight issues, <laughs> and eight issues and out, yeah. and yeah. now like it's. <laughs> It's, uh, what, like, five years? Oh, God, no, it's not five. It's nearly, we're eight, we're eight years after. <laughs> 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 
You're old, so scamp. Amazing. You're old. Um, yeah. Yeah. Years, yeah. I mean, it, it's still, this book, obviously, is still really new out in the world. Literally, Very literally. in uh, comic book stores right now. Yeah. Until Tuesday. I'll and you can get it at bookstores everywhere. And yeah, it's like the, that's the cool thing about a story. It's the cool thing about adapting an old story is like it, like, we write it, artist draws it, all that right. stuff happens. It gets printed, but it doesn't continue on in its life no. as a thing yeah. until it's out in readers' hands, until it's out interacting with that audience. And, like, that changes the process, the creativity, what happens to a story, like, as it's out in the world becoming whatever its own thing is. Yeah. It did that with Lumberjanes, yep. and so it's, like, it's still really early. Like, who knows? Who knows? That's, yeah. Anything that's can happen. Yeah. Anything can happen. <laughs> One of the things that I absolutely, absolutely love in the story is how Izzy's parents are just Izzy Crane. <laughs> yes. Her parents are so supportive. Like, they're really that safe space where she can work out her feelings, mm -hmm. work out her feelings about Vicky. They're such a cute couple. Yes. Um, but in a, lot of, in a lot of these stories, the parents are usually, like, largely absent mm -hmm. or they're just not that supportive. And you see kind of where the child's trauma comes from. You know, we see that with Vicky, <laughs> yeah, right. with the child. But having them as such a safe space, was that an idea from the beginning? Or did you guys develop that as you went? It was a pretty early, yeah, idea, pretty early idea, I would yeah. say, that we definitely had this... We had this uh, notion that Izzy's parents are really supportive and there for her, but they trust they trust her a lot, right? She yeah. rides her bike all over the hollow. Yeah. Adventures ensue, um, and so yeah, they were they they're kind of like the, the sort of trusting presence where there's that back and forth between them that they know they can trust her and she knows she can count on them, and so she's allowed a lot of freedom, um, and so we we definitely knew we needed her to have freedom to be able to move around the hollow and go on these adventures yeah. and stuff uh, without it being a conflict the way it is for Vicky, where yeah, she's right. got yeah. all these people and their expectations putting this really like short leash on her, yeah. essentially. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it was really the, the relationship with her parents was a big part, both of her character, yes. who she is in the world, and uh, as a function of the plot. Like, we, yeah. Needed, yeah. we needed her to have that freedom. Exactly. Yeah, she's a great, like, you know... Uh, like modern standards for like if somebody ended up in the town of Sleepy Hall, they told it's only like a modern grade style. You'd be questioning like, what is this? Yes. Why are, yeah. are you guys obsessed with this? Which is a little bit. I love it. I love we that are, you're picking that up. We yeah, are yeah. Big, you know, Halloween folks, and even we went and we were like, holy mackerel! <laughs> it's on the ambulances. Yeah, <laughs> it is. Oh, yeah. oh it's it's, the it's horse next is level. The yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, he's yeah, yeah he's, he's painted that yeah, the horseman he's the school mascot. They love it. The village it's, the village has really put their arms around it. And we love like they're a very kind of small, tight knit community. Yeah. And uh, they uh, they're really proud of where they come from and, and what their their town means to American literature. And it's very cute. Oh, yeah, I like it's, it it's cool. It's re it's really cool. It's yeah, amazing. Cause I was like flipping through. I'm just like, no way. Yeah. There would oh. never be a town that's this obsessed. Oh man. No, that's, no. that's yeah. amazing. It was the town was the inspiration. We were yeah. like, this is this is next level. Yeah, we got to do something with this. Yeah. I have an, a character question on Vicky actually. Yeah. One thing that I thought was really cool is how you show her struggles with identity mm -hmm. through mm -hmm. the different clothes that she yeah. wears and through the different costumes that she puts yeah. on. Was that something also early in the process that you came up with? That was or? super early. We The great thing about graphic novels is that you are, you know, everything is very visual. Like you should yes. be visual. You should be using the media to express these ideas. And we really wanted her struggle with kind of the idea of not being pigeonholed mm -hmm. uh, to be a visual journey. And what's the easiest way to do that? It's like, yeah, through her clothes. Yeah. So. And yeah, it is a really, that was a really early choice. Yeah. And it's, it's, you know, it is very natural to her character because she, like she says at one point, I think it's all I know how to do, right? Is put yeah. on these costumes. It's what everybody expects. Yeah. And so, yeah. Like so emotional, but like in the best way, I was just like, 
Oh I my see. god. I feel this pain. <laughs> I see it. I think yeah, I think it's it's pretty relatable, right? Really? Because it's like if if costumes uh, or you know being a real Van Tassel is a stand in for expectations that your family of origin, sometimes even your chosen family or community, whatever, has on you. Um, yeah, it can be really constricting and I think a lot of people relate yeah. to that in a big way. So. Yeah. I don't know if you're like familiar with like maybe I'm making a stretch here like with our pieces of Mia. I thought of like as soon as I saw Vicky changing it to those clothes, I'm like, it's Haruhi okay, because she doesn't want to be labeled. Uh -huh. so, you know, she goes through all these like clothes. Yeah, that's that's that. a good one. I yeah, that. same. That's yeah. actually such a cool reference. I love that. Yeah. yeah. I love, it, but I, love it. <laughs> I love it. Uh I think also one thing that's really fun about your guys' world is like there's so many dark and depressing queer stories that make us all sad. Um, yes. Yes. and this is a very <laughs> warm and fuzzy world that we can all get into and we can all feel safe. And I think that you guys really masterfully put that together. Oh, um, and I actually I wonder too if that's one of the reasons. I don't, this is I can cut this if this is too much. Of a okay, no, all right. But you guys put the villain right under our nose. Yes. Right from the beginning of the story. Yes. Um, it's a mystery, kind of how he's doing what he's doing and like exactly what he's doing. But we know who he is, and I was wondering if that is why you made that decision. Oh, so it wouldn't be as kind of traumatizing. So we're not yeah, as like, anxious, like, who wow. is it? Who is it? Oh. It is. It's fun. It is fun as the reader, and especially kind of in a ghost story, right? Like, yeah. To watch people come, especially, we wanted to play with expectations with this, right? Yeah. Like, you, you know, you, you go into this story expecting one character to be the villain. Yes. And you come out of it, you know, finding uh, something else. Yeah. And um, I think it's fun. It's fun as the reader to um, to engage safely in scary things. I That has always been, like, a career thing for me. I mean, yeah. honestly, like, I was an editor. I was the head of Boombox for a lot of years and made a lot Which of comics there. Made, right? And made Lumberjanes for <laughs> many, many years. Um, and... That has always been like a, a priority of mine is like that safe, you know, that idea of uh, engaging in queerness joyfully in a safe yeah. space yeah, has sure. been a massive uh, priority. And I think, you know, here, uh, this is a situation where like, this is a spooky book, but it's not really a scary book, you yeah. know, and it's in you want to be able to engage with ghost stories in that way, right? Like, from a, from a lens of safety. And queer stories, queer frankly. Stories. Yeah. yeah, without being, like, terrified, is it going to be a barrier gaze? <laughs> yeah. No gays are buried. Yeah. No, not a, not a They all live. Oh, yeah. All of our lovely queers live in this story, yeah. and it's amazing. That's a spoiler I'm happy to give you yeah, because exactly. we need we need a lot more of that. Yeah. Yeah. It's always like you know you gotta pour through like a lot of queer media. It's like trigger warnings. Can I show this to you? Yeah. Like queer. And it's or, it's really yeah, exactly. important to have that stuff out there. It's important for queer creators to process their trauma. Oh, absolutely. You know, the world in that way. But it is also, you know, it is a priority to engage in queer joy and present yeah. queer joy. And, uh, well, and frankly, I think it's important for straight audiences to see queer stories that aren't yeah. just trauma narratives because then they think that's all a queer experience, yes. right? It's just yeah. these really traumatic, tragic, and it, it locks us in boxes yeah. Yeah. in this, in this yeah. weird way. Yeah. Absolutely. And I think that that's actually why Croc is such a brilliant character yeah. in this yeah. as well. We love our, we love our himbo <laughs> hands. <and stuff. laughs> love Croc. Sweet boy. <laughs> Such a sweet boy. And he, I feel like he goes a long way in making this world so safe. Yeah. Oh, um, I, I love, love that. that. Yeah. I think that was a great choice. Yeah. And I think that, like, you guys, like, I'm not going to spoil what happens, but it's very lovely, especially because historically the character he's put into is a historically unsafe character. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. You think, you know, it's kind of painted that he could be the well, but it's more, you know, like horsemen, but like right. instead, you're just a really supportive friend who likes to pranks and. Yeah, <laughs> right?
love sprays. Love sprays. Cracking. Yeah. Is there if there's one thing that you would love our audience to know? before they pick up this book, okay, what would it be? I mean, de I definitely think there is that added layer of joy with what we already talked about, knowing that uh, the town of Sleepy Hollow does exist. Yes. It's still rocking, yeah, and huge. it's like this uh, as it much as we so were able. Fun. If you have the chance to visit ever, <laughs> yeah, do it. Please do it. They have an amazing historical society that does a lot of stuff around town. Uh, they really, they take a lot of pride in their town. Yeah. And, uh, we, we have, we had a ball and we're looking forward to having a ball. We're going there next week. Yeah. We are. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing. To do bookstore yeah, events there. So. Yeah. Uh, and other than that, I don't know. I hope you know that a lot of love from a huge yeah. creative team went into it. Absolutely. And uh, we just really hope everyone loves it. That's everyone it. Loves it. I, yeah. I feel like they will. Uh, we loved it. It was so cute. It was so cozy. It's going to be one of my favorite like, repeat Halloween things. Uh, oh, yes. That's all. Thank you. Thank all you. All we want. Thank you guys yeah. so much for watching. Thank, thank, thank you, you guys both. for being with thank us. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thanks. Okay, I, I hope to bring you guys more of this kind of content. Please like, subscribe, and let us know what your Halloween October reads are going to be this year.